This is your no BS guide to achieving an aesthetic body. This used to be me and this is me now. It did take me 10 years to get to this point, but I'll do my best to simplify and condense everything for you in one sitting. Firstly, by aesthetic, we mean muscle. And in order to get muscle, you must be incorporating resistance training or weight lifting. So I'm gonna start there. What to do when it comes to your training? Work out between three and five weight lifting sessions per week. These should ideally last between 45 minutes and one hour and 15 minutes. If you want to do additional cardio, that comes on top of these weightlifting sessions. You can do these on your full rest days, as an active rest day, or you can do it at the end of your workout sessions. If you lean towards being overweight and obese, this is especially important for you. If you're more skinny, then you can just incorporate your cardio as part of your warm-ups and cooling down. When it does come to cardio, my recommendation is just sticking to slow steady state cardio. So just a gradual jog or walk on the treadmill. Heat training is not necessary at all, high intensity interval training. However, if you did want to incorporate HIIT in conjunction with slow steady state cardio, then there's nothing particularly wrong with that. But if your goal is primarily to be aesthetic, then I would just stick to slow steady state cardio as you would require more calories in order to upkeep and stay in a surplus. But we'll get to nutrition in a moment. Also, when it comes to your training, you must be prioritizing compound lifts, compound exercises at the start of all of your workouts, after your warm-ups, of course. And as you progress in each of your workouts, then you can start tapering into your isolation lifts, your accessory exercises. In order to continue seeing progression from week to week, from month to month, and in order to achieve the fastest aesthetic physique and gains possible, you must be incorporating the principle of progressive overload. So progressive overload just means that you must be progressing in some way, shape or form from week to week, from month to month, as previously mentioned. You can do this through a variety of methods. Frequency, volume, posture, stability, control, range of motion, overall technique and form, overall rest times, drop sets, weight, reps, and the list goes on, just to name a big handful of them. So as long as you are incorporating progressive overload and remaining consistent, then you are gonna see progress in the gym when it comes to muscle, when it comes to your gains, when it comes to your strength, no matter what, especially as a beginner. As a beginner, I highly recommend you just train hard out for one year straight, so 12 months, because that's when you're gonna gain the most amount of muscle possible. Then you consider whether or not you want to unmask your gains, so go in a caloric deficit in order to be aesthetic. Because obviously in a caloric surplus, as a beginner, you're gonna be eating a lot of food, you're gonna be looking fluffy, you're gonna be having a lot of glycogen within your muscles, hence, not looking as some of your favorite celebrities, some of your favorite influencers do when it comes to their peak shred, which is when you get to those extreme low levels of body fat. When it comes down to your rest days, you must be incorporating two to three full rest days in between the last time you trained that muscle group. That is dependent on whether you're a beginner, novice, intermediate, advanced, or athlete. As a beginner, the recommendation is three full rest days from the last time you trained that muscle group. So for example, if I train chest today, and it's a Monday, I'm not gonna train chest again, at least at the very minimum to Thursday. Those rest days specifically refer to taking a step away from the weights, resting away from the gym, the resistance training. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to rest when it comes to your cardiovascular endurance. In fact, it's highly recommended that you maintain your activity level when it comes to your cardio, when it comes to your steps. Nothing is worse than remaining sanitary, especially when you're overweight or obese, it is actually extremely recommended that you maintain your activity level even on your off days. 
just take a step away from the weights, stay active when it comes to your cardio. Now this is a good transition to start talking about what to do when it comes to your nutrition in order to achieve an aesthetic body. First and foremost, as a beginner, if you are completely fresh to the gym, you've never lifted a dumbbell before, you've never lifted weights before, then you have absolutely zero muscle under your frame. So thus, you must be building your muscle first in order to look aesthetic when you start losing the weight, losing the fat, in order to unmask the gains. Therefore, I highly recommend beginners or people who haven't trained in the gym consistently for one whole year, 12 months, do that first. Then afterward, you can go down the process of a caloric deficit, dieting, in order to look shredded, look conditioned, look aesthetic. So if you haven't done that first, do that first. If you have been training in the gym for a very minimum of 12 months, then if you're impatient and you really just wanna see how aesthetic you'd look under all that additional fluff, then you should go in a caloric deficit. How strict this caloric deficit is really depends on how heavy your starting point is or dependent really on your body fat percentage starting point. So if you're really heavy and you just want to get rid of the fat ASAP, then a caloric deficit of 500 to 1000 calories from your maintenance is recommended. Or you can take the slower approach and just stick to 500. If you're more leaner, like me right now, and I'm 10 kilos away from stage weight, then you take the slower approach. 300 to 700 calories, starting on 300 calories in a caloric deficit. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, a caloric deficit just means either burning more calories than you consume or eating less calories than you burn, or a combination of the two. The opposite of this is called a caloric surplus. So literally, either eating more calories than you burn or burning less calories than you consume or a combination of the two. The maintenance calories is what you require in order to maintain your current weight. You can find this all for free online. Search up TDEE, input your data, your height, your weight, your activity level, etc, etc, and that is going to give you your calories. That is exactly what you need in order to become aesthetic when it comes down to you unmasking your gains, unmasking the hard work that you put into your training. Hence why training was first, because if you don't train, you're not going to have any muscle. If you don't weight lift, you're not going to have anything to unmask. Now, when it comes to that individual being overweight and obese, and you just want to cut all the fat first, then you would technically be aesthetic without the muscle, because obviously, I should tread on fine lines. Anything is better than being fluffy. Let's just say that. You're gonna look aesthetic no matter what if you're not fluffy, if you're no longer fluffy, I'll leave it at that. So what else should you be factoring in when it comes to nutrition? Let's talk about your protein intake. One gram to one pound of body weight. This is like the golden rule. I would actually go as far as to say 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And that is again, highly dependent on where you are in your training age, how many years you've been training consistently. For me, I've been training 10 years consistently. I'm an athlete. I compete on stage in natural bodybuilding. Hence, when I get into those extremely lean body weights, I require 1.2, 1.3 pounds per gram um, if you're a beginner, you're gonna require the lower range of that, so 0.8. Regardless, you're gonna be gaining muscle as a beginner. If you just wanna be on the safer side, just stick to the golden rule, one to one. Now, when it comes to your macronutrients, make sure you're consuming all three. I'm sick and tired of these fad diets. Don't listen to anyone who says you must be on keto, you must be on carnivore, you must be on arnivore, whatever the hell it is, plant this, plant that. Just make sure you're incorporating all three macronutrients, proteins, fats, carbs, complex carbohydrates, healthy fats, rich protein, lean protein, 
That's all you need to know. And if you want to get deep, if you're more advanced, 25% in protein, that usually equals one to one. Uh, 50 to 55% in complex carbohydrates, and the remainder is in fats. Complex carbohydrates is extremely important, and even some neuroscientists will tell you otherwise, now I beg to differ, it's extremely important because that's gonna be your primary source of energy. Your muscles are made up of glycogen, over 70% stored in your muscles, made up of glycogen, thus that's gonna be your primary energy when it comes to your gym. Your muscles won't be able to perform if you're glycogen deficient, let's call it. How about supplementation when it comes to achieving an aesthetic body, or for any fitness goal for that matter? I would actually highly recommend you just stick to two of the most popular, most researched, most affordable, and most effective supplements. They will always be whey protein and creatine. Whey protein, especially in a dieting period, starts to become a non-negotiable because as you get leaner, as you get to those more shredded body fat percentages, as you want to start looking more aesthetic, as you start chipping away, you're going to require leaner protein. The easiest, the most convenient way to get that in is through whey protein. And of course, creatine is the most affordable, highly researched, highly effective for both strength, creatine phosphate levels, neurological, organ function, the list goes on. Creatine is the king of the kings, then it comes down to whey protein, in my opinion. For other additional supplementations, you can go for zinc, you can go for magnesium, omega-3. I don't personally take any of that. When it comes down to competition prep, I also supplement BCAAs. It's gonna help with recovery, it's gonna help with muscle retention because of the amino acids. Anything to ensure that I retain my muscle, especially when getting shredded, especially when starting to look more aesthetic. If you're after guaranteed results when it comes to achieving your aesthetic body goals, please avoid these beginner mistakes. Firstly, do not ego lift. You're just gonna set yourself back. You are achieving nothing. As a beginner, your rep ranges should in fact be between 15 and 30 repetitions. Regardless of what you are doing in the gym, as long as you are incorporating progressive overload and consistency, you are going to be gaining muscle, especially within that first 12 months of consistency. Stick between 15 and 30 repetitions at the very minimum for the first six months. Then after learning, posture, form, technique, stability, and control, and after slowly and gradually increasing weight, then you can start tapering off when it comes to your repetitions. But my main recommendation is always sticking to a minimum of 15. Then you should be tracking in some way, shape, or form both your workouts and your nutrition. This will just make your life significantly easier when it comes to progressing from week to week. It can literally be something as simple as writing in a basic journal, writing in the notes app of your phone, or perhaps you have an app or a coach to track this all for you. Just make sure you're tracking. Another really important one is setting clear goals. This is a massive mistake that many beginners make, even intermediates make, late into their training age. It's so simple, so basic, yet, Many people don't do it. It's easy to say, I wanna lose 10 pounds. I wanna gain 10 pounds. Who bloody cares? Everyone has the same goal. You need to be specific. Be measurable. Be realistic. Be time specific. For example, instead of saying, I wanna lose or gain 10 pounds, say, I wanna gain 10 pounds in six months of consistently training three times per week for one hour per session at 6 a.m every single workout. That's how you should structure your goals. Not saying, I wanna gain 10 pounds. No one cares, because you know why no one cares? It's not specific, there is no accountability there. Accountability is the word I'm after. And speaking about accountability, you should have a supportive network to help you along the entire process. 
I had that in the beginning and I was very thankful. In fact, what I did in the beginning is I set a competition between two of my best friends. I said, by this time next year, whoever gets the biggest is the winner. That's it, they were the winner. And whoever was the winner had to shout dinner. So that was my accountability and we had weekly, monthly check-ins. And that small, insignificant goal that became clear ended up being the best decision I've ever made in my life. That's how I went from this to this. This is how it is literally my identity now. So that is why setting clear goals is one of the biggest benefits you can ever do and the biggest mistakes if you do not do. There are still many more points I would love to bring up, but it looks like this video is over 25 minutes long. So I'll leave that for a part two in the future. And if you would love to see that, if you learned something from today's video, please consider dropping me a like, subscribing to the channel, commenting below. And if you want to debate me down in the comment section, feel free to, or if you just have any questions. I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.